If you found this video of me talking, it's because you are wanting to know if a newer style FP25 out of, say, a 2015 Legacy is going to fit and run in your 11, 12, or 13 Forester. I can tell you from experience that it will. I'm going to walk you through the things that need to be swapped over, um, some of the issues you might encounter, some of the codes that might arise, and what might be causing those codes because I've done a number of things wrong along the way and I had to go backwards and backtrack and figure out what was causing the codes and what was causing the problems and had to fix them. So also with that being said, please comment if you have any questions, if you have any codes that arise after the swap and you're not sure how to get to the solution, I may have some solutions for you. Okay guys. The time is now. We are going to put a 2017 Legacy engine in this 2011 Forester. And uh, what happened to this unit, it ran out of oil and uh, we aerated the block. I say we was not me. I bought it this way. So I want to go through with you some things that you got to swap over if you do this engine swap. Here's the old engine, FB25. This is also an FB25, but this is out of a 2017 Legacy. I've never done 2017 Legacy engine in an 11 Forester. I have done a 2015 Legacy engine in an 11 Forester and a 2015 Legacy engine in a 13 Forester. Uh, both successful on the road running running great So just want to go through a few of these things so you know what needs to be done what needs to be swapped over and That it is indeed possible and it works and you can get an engine for under $800 on eBay And I have not been burned yet. This will be my third engine in the last few months that we've done this with so Okay, let's get started while I was at work today my dad pulled this engine because he was bored and he loves it. So he tore it all apart or tore it down here and then he waited for me because he got to the point where he needed to know what to do next. So instead of a step-by-step -step going through and showing you what all needs to come off, <laughs> I'm just going to have to show you what on the new engine has to change. We'll, we'll one by one, piece by piece this thing. Okay. Firstly and most importantly, the intake manifold that came with the new engine needs to be utilized for this engine swap because these tumble generator valves are different. Okay, These are built into the manifold. These are built into this intermediate housing. The ports on the heads do not match up with these. I've tried to run them with these. It will not work. You'll have a, a lean condition and the car won't idle and it won't run right. So you have to use this. If you have questions about why and other things, please comment and I will explain more in detail. Um, <clears throat> you need to swap these over. So from here, uh, you need to use these original ones. But what I do is, there's little flippers under there. Each one has two screws. I grind off the screws and I take the flaps out so it's just free flowing air. No restriction. All right. <clears throat> And then I take this and I leave this on here and I take the other one with it, I bolt them together, I plug them in somewhere in the engine bay and let them do their thing. Let them flip, let them flop. Computer thinks it's still working. No problems. <clears throat> to which I've got some extension harnesses made up so I can get them up out of the way because the, the little cords are short so I'm going to have them run clear over here where there's space and I'll run a bolt in here with a little bracket and I'll hang them off down in this free space. Secondly, with this intake manifold, we gotta swap over a ton of stuff. This bracket has to be changed. This little valve has to be changed because it's different and it, it's just different. <coughs> the throttle body needs to go on here from the old intake manifold. Um, this EGR stuff all has to be swapped over even the fuel lines <coughs> excuse me from that old engine intake manifold has to come over to this 
crossover pipe here dad's already got started we need the harness off of the old engine for the new engine and we need this coolant crossover pipe as well and this hose here this one doesn't come with the new engine but it needs to go in there um, <clears throat> Oh gosh, I don't know how I can do all of this in such a short video. We need to take the tone wheel off the old engine and put it on here because the sensor will read it. That being said, this sensor is long and skinny. It reads a smaller tone wheel. This sensor is big and fat. It reads a bigger wheel. So we use this flex plate. We have to use that sensor. Two bolts, some lube, and some prying. This will come off. Uh, <coughs> knock sensor there's a knock sensor in here right there the new engine does not have that knock sensor back there the new engine has the knock sensor up towards the front right there so you just take it out and you put it in the hole that's back here no big deal this whole front cover must come off and the one from the old engine must go on because the newer legacies had electric power steering pumps I believe and so there's not another pulley here whereas there is up here so this cover has to come over and also behind this there's three bolts that hold on a little tone wheel here that this sensor reads for your cam timing this this one has three little grooves. This one has three little protrusions. Uh, here's the cover off of the new engine and the old one. We've got to switch these. We're going to use this tone wheel with the notch out. And we're going to replace the one with the notch sticking out. So these come off. These go back on this engine without disturbing any of the time. First time I made the mistake of not switching those. And the car would run, but I was getting lots of codes for cam and crank out of correlation. Those have to be switched over, okay? Um, if your timing jumps while you're doing anything, retime it, retime both chains. That was something I screwed up once too. It ran fine, but bank two, I had cam and crank out of correlation and I it's because I had a time wrong so both times I've done this I've had it in the car running and I've had to reach in get the fans out and take this stupid cover back off that's glued on clean it all off glue it again and put it back in while it's in the car huge pain in the butt third time's a charm I do not foresee that happening once it goes in it's gonna stay in. another thing these coil packs they have a different connector so you have to use the coil packs from the old engine uh, however the boots that go to your spark plugs are longer on the new engine and some guys say you gotta swap over this cam cover and then they'll reach but all I do is I just pop the rubber boots off of the coil packs and I swap them over so I use the old coil pack with the boots from the new engine and then you have to come up with some sort of a shim or spacer behind that coil pack or else when you thread this in it'll pinch it and go so I just use like a little quarter inch nut back behind there and it spaces it out just perfectly another thing is you gotta get rid of this EGR because we're bringing over the EGR from this one okay and it'll hook right up to here boom 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 and it'll come up and it'll hook right into the back of your pipe your crossover pipe boink right there one more thing to mention about this cover is in order to get all the bolts that are down in here you got to take this pulley off the water pump this is a wire on the new engine for low oil level that legacies had and Forrester didn't and so that little baby's just gonna run free or you can clip it or you can move it out of the way because you will not another it. thing is the engine mounts uh forester engines mount like this with those two of them 
and the legacy mounted directly to the transmission and the rubberized mounts were on the transmission. And there was a mount up in the center on the front. Boom, boom. You take the bolts out, you take that off. You won't need that anymore. When I do this, there's like four O-rings back behind here. I replace those with new ones, Subaru OEM. And I also do the front crank seal, front main, when I'm in there. One thing to note, threw me off, the old engine has this, this pipe or tube goes from one side of the block to the other. The new one does not. You don't need to worry about it. Somewhere mm. under this new engine, there is a pipe for coolant. This one. And, or oil, I don't know. Can't remember. We won't use it. That pipe will come off. So what I did and I've done is we take this clamp off, we stick some kind of a bolt without threads in there, clamp it tight, 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 and we just block that passage right off. Also highly recommend when you change this crossover pipe, the coolant crossover pipe, a common leaking point for coolant is under the ports here where the, as the coolant goes down into the block, sorry I wasn't showing, coolant goes down into the block there and back there where the bolts are. The O-ring oftentimes looks terrible. Oh, this one's not off yet. Um, the John Deere, the John Deere. The Subaru ones are kind of soft. Um, so I have found a John Deere O-ring that is the same size, but it's got a higher durometer. It's harder. And I like the way that it squishes when I bolt that back down. And if you want that part number, or if you live anywhere near John Deere dealership, I can give you that number. I also use... Oh... What was I? I use these same ones from the old engine to the new engine, so everything matches. Lastly, another thing is... Your oil capacity is going to be different from a 2011 Forester to a 2017 or 2015 Legacy, whatever you go with. So make note of that in your manual, or what we do sometimes is we'll take a like a white marker or something and we'll write the capacity, the oil capacity here, or somewhere, <clears throat> so that when we're changing the oil we know without having to go back and worry about it. That's interesting. Here's the front cover. This is where the oil pump goes. And you can see this doesn't look real sweet and there was some chunks of metal in there. So I think we're gonna get a new front cover instead of use this off the old engine because we had there was such a catastrophic failure uh, with the rod punched through the block and it tried to suck up some of those goodies through the oil pump and she don't look so good. I've got all the sensors swapped over to this cover and it's cleaned out. I've got my sealer on there. I'm using Hylamar. It's a Hylamar product. Where is that thing? It's actually a John Deere part. Here's the part number. I don't know. You can use whatever you want, I suppose. This is good stuff. And I've got a new O-ring here, a new O-ring here, there. And there, I've got these tone wheels changed, both sides, and we're gluing stuff together. I'm letting that skin up a little bit, and then I'll put it on. All right, so the engine's in and everything is all buttoned up. I haven't got these placed where I wanted to, but these are the jumper harnesses that I made for these tumble generator valves so that I can make a bracket and stick it down in that engine bay someplace. Um, but first I want to start it kind of bad. And I'm going to put some coolant in here. Oil's in it. 5.1 quarts. And yeah, buddy. And it runs.
So I've got some excess oil on places that's burning off and smoking and uh, the belt's hollering a lot less than it was when I first started. I think there was a lot of oil on there from from the previous engine when the, when the block had a hole in it and there was oil going all over the place. But there's just a chirp and it's steadily, steadily going away. Otherwise, purring like a kitten. We're just getting the air out of the system. And uh, the chirping is all but gone. I like that better. Okay, so this is the finishing touch. Right there, you can see, put a bolt through there, the rusty one, <laughs> that one. Holding these babies out of the way. There you go. And it runs great. Complete. So here's the finished product, 2017 Legacy engine in a 2011 Forester. The car has 100,000 on it, the engine has about 105. And uh, I did have some codes for the intake runner's valve, it was P2004 uh, stuck open while these little flippers were hitting this brake line. So we had to put a couple nuts in there as spacers down there, see? and a little longer bolt, 10 millimeter head, and uh, cinched it, so now the code went away. Now we should be good. Now we should be good.